I went ahead and gathered a bunch of stuff just to give you an idea of what I'm going to put in these because rather than you sit here and watch me put every little thing in here, I'll probably do this as like a time lapse, but I want you to know what's in here and what these boxes are and sort of what's going on. So this was just a little paint palette that I got off of Amazon. This is a little bit more sealed. It's got a rubbery lid with some little divots in it that fill in the cracks over here so I can put a bunch of different colors in this really small palette. Originally, I had it intended to buy like a bunch of different acrylic gouache colors and fill this up with that, but then a wonderful thing happened and Liquitex Basics came out with this really great fluid paint. So what I went ahead and did is I got a bunch of squeeze bottles from the craft store and each one of these is a four ounce tube of Liquitex Basics medium body paint and a four ounce bottle of the Liquitex fluid and I shook it up and so now I have a bunch of the different Liquitex Basics colors all in these squeeze bottles. And the whole point of doing that was basically making an inexpensive soft body paint. So if you're not familiar, really the only way to buy professional soft body paint, I think the only person that makes it is Liquitex and it's insanely expensive. This was a much better option and it has a matte effect to it. So it ended up basically being acrylic gouache. It's not quite as opaque as Liquitex's acrylic gouache, but it's pretty close. So I am going to take a whole bunch of these and put a bunch of different colors in here, but I'm also going to take one of these, and I'll tell you about this in a minute, and put a limited palette in here because I wanna be able to dip a bigger brush into the paint for a bigger sketchbook, and I wanna make sure I at least have some basic colors um, in larger quantities so that I can go ahead and do that. And so what these are, if you're not already familiar, these are just bead containers from Michaels. And these particular ones have 10 slots in them. The center one is permanent. These little ones come out. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do for the paint box is, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do for the paint box is go ahead and glue these little ones down. But what's awesome is for all of these other supplies, I can make custom sized spots for them. In here, I can take all of these out and put pencils in. I can just take a couple out and be able to fit like tempera sticks and stuff like that. So what I'm basically going to put in these, aside from the obvious, which is paint, is I wanna make sure I get some colored pencils in here. I just use Prismacolor colored pencils. They tend to be on a little bit of the softer side compared to some other pencils, I guess. That's what they say. I don't have a ton of colored pencils. So um, I'm gonna put a variety of colors in there. I'm gonna take my Caran d'Ache Neo colors and I'm gonna take the wrappers off and break them in half so that I have a half that's still available in my studio and I don't have to go digging through this every time I want something. And I'm gonna do the same with my oil pastels. These are just really cheap uh, Mungio Gallery oil pastels. It's like 20 bucks and you get a big pack of a whole bunch of different colors and they're great. I wanna put a few tempera sticks in there. These are great for just laying down some really thick opaque marks. And these are my favorite dry pastels. Some people call them chalk pastels. These specifically are the new pastels. They are a hard pastel and differ from the softer ones. And other than that, I'm gonna throw some charcoal pencils. This is just a Stabilo All pencil, which if you're not familiar, is basically a black watercolor pencil. It's very pigmented and delightful to use. So it's just a handy thing to have in the kit to be able to play with it. And lastly, I'm gonna put just a regular pencil. This is a 2B, it's nothing too dark. No, I lied. There is another thing I'm gonna put in here because this pencil made me think of it and now I don't know where it is. Ah. I am going to put a Kimberly pencil in there. These are amazing if you don't already know. I love chunky pencils. 
So if you look at this, the tip on this is so much fatter than a regular pencil. I'm trying to find a way to show you, but it gives you this beautiful chunky line and it's a 9XXB, so it's super dark when you put it down and it just, ah, oh, I love it. It just gives a bunch of awesome marks. So I'm gonna go ahead and start gluing little things down and taking things apart and sort of figuring out how we can get all of this stuff in these boxes. finished filling everything the limited palette palette is still drying I glued all the things down but that's just gonna have a couple yellows reds blues some black and white in there so it's not as um, adorable and exciting as this is so everything fit in there nicely this is basically an off-white a warm white that I mix up with just some regular titanium white and a couple different yellows in it this is regular titanium white and I have so many of these because if you've been painting for a while, you know you use white the most. And then I just put some black in those ones. I'm not gonna tip this over too much because it's just soft body paint, but I can stack it in a bag on top of other things. So like all these size things can get stacked up and then I can put this on top. I'll probably put this in like a Ziploc bag though, just for safekeeping, but these i fit some pastels and some tempera sticks in here i might end up taking some more of the pastels out i'm trying to limit my supplies because when you're out and you just want to use a variety of things you don't want to get overwhelmed by having to make a bunch of decisions so this just has a variety of pencils um, a lot of light colors so i can go over the paint and some other pencil -y type things that i already talked about and lastly, in this one, a few more tempera sticks, some oil pastels, and some neo colors. And I think this is more than enough to give me plenty of variety when I'm out painting to be able to do what I want to do, which is basically I like to scribble a lot and make marks and mush paint. So having a variety of tactile things is going to keep somebody like me more engaged for a longer period of time when I'm painting. And so this stacks up into a nice little bundle to go into a bag. So I'm happy with how this turned out. The other thing I want to do is start painting more of just the more mundane stuff that is around me. So I want to be somebody more that has a sketchbook lying around the house that paints my coffee cup or my teacup or the plates on the table. And the reason for that is I think a lot of my motivation for art is I tend to find a lot of poetry and meaning in the mundane. I'm not somebody who feels the need to take all these big wild vacations and trips. I actually tend to like to stay in one place and find depth in that versus breadth by going a bunch of places. And that's not to say I don't want to travel at all, but I'm somebody who tends to like to sit in my garden and read books for like an entire summer and I'm pretty content with that. So that is kind of where I see my art going. So I'm trying to bring the stuff that's around me into my art in such a way that while it might be really specific to me, it conveys these really universal concepts, again, of like poetry in the mundane or the feelings we feel when the seasons change. So 
I am going to bring you along through that process and we're going to play in our sketchbook a little bit today. Don't know why I'm referring to myself in the plural, but here we are. So what I'm using this book for right now is just for playing. Um, sometimes when I work in something that's like an art journal that I've made, it tends to have a theme and that limits me, which is a great thing sometimes, but sometimes I just want to be able to open something and do whatever I want. It doesn't have to be cohesive. It doesn't have to look like what's on the page before. So in some of these, I just went ahead and I felt like mixing up colors one night. So I went ahead and did that and just mushed paint all over the pages to use for backgrounds. And that's what I did um, on these pages. And then another day I came along and started putting birds on them because that's what I felt like doing that day. And I'm trying to find a balance about, I want to bring birds into my work because I love them, but at the same time, I don't want the whole bird to be painted. So I'm just experimenting with um, different ways of making birds there. But um, I was going through my stuff and I have a bunch of these that I saved. So these are my palette papers. This is just deli paper I use as palette paper a lot of the time. And when the colors on them that are mixed up like this are really interesting or nice um, and I want to save the palette paper, I just go ahead and let it dry and save it. So I just want to cut up some of this and go ahead and use it as collage because this will give me some starting points in here for playing around. And it doesn't have to be on there um, perfectly. I do try to get wrinkles out, but it can be tricky. And see, so when I come along, this is better to have something like this than a totally blank page. And it just gives me options to work from if I have a whole bunch of pages that have, you know, just something on them. And then I can just pick one and dive in. Um, if you stick things between your pages, it'll keep them from gluing together because sometimes the gel gets everywhere and you don't want pages ripping apart in a regular sketchbook. And what I like about doing this too is you get a variety of edges and there's something about um, like a brush mark being broken up because it was ripped on the edge versus a brush mark that just stops because that's where your brush stopped. Like when something else breaks that edge, I don't know, there's something about it that just makes it more interesting. And a lot of what I'm doing with this is just trying different things. I have a lot of things that I kind of want to bring together in my work. Um, some things might go well together, some things might not. And I think for me, there's going to be bodies of work that just don't go together. Um, you know, it's kind of like Taylor Swift, whether you like her music or not, artistically, she sort of just has these albums that can be very different from the ones before and the ones that come after. They're just their own cohesive thing. And I don't see a lot of artists do this, but I wish I saw it more, is where they have maybe a collection of artwork that all goes together. It's a body of work, but it doesn't necessarily have to look like the thing that came before or the thing that came after. So I'm just trying to break out of a mindset that everything I'm doing needs to look connected to the thing I did before. I kind of just want things to be their own thing. So there's already something here, which is pretty cool. So the last piece of paper I think I'm going to glue is a compliment, which is nice. Um, 
And this is a good thing to note. Like I can feel myself starting to get bored with this. Like this was really fun when I started gluing stuff because it's fun um, to glue things. But I can start feeling that I need to change it up and do something else. And so it's really good if you can to pay attention while you're working to what's enjoyable um, and when it stops being enjoyable because then it's fine, that's okay, you just go do something else. And I kind of like this shape lately, things that just kind of look like bowls. There's just something about it. I'm gonna go ahead and work on this page. I'm gonna do it um, upside down now because I'm looking at this and this looks like a bird's nest. And this is sort of a terrible thing about working or a good thing about working in a sketchbook is that with a painting, you can just turn it over and it's no big deal. But this whole page situation here is just gonna be upside down. So I don't have too many um, really dark oil pastels, but I want to put some like sort of scritchy marks over this. And I don't know, I think I'll use this, but I'm going to use my left hand so that I don't try to make like pretty marks. I want like nest twiggy things coming up. And if I use my right hand, my right hand is going to try to tell me that it knows what this looks like and it's not going to be loose like I want it. Come across. So that looks pretty cool. That's fun. I'm going to mix up some paint for the sky. I'm just going to mix up some blues with a little bit of orange in it. It just makes a really nice muted blue. And I don't want to think too much. I just want to come in. This is just a sketchbook and make some loose marks. Put a little more orange in this to get a darker gray. I don't want to think too much about where I'm putting this, but it's all about kind of just building up these loose layers, at least for me it is. So I kind of wish I hadn't covered up so much of the paper because I actually like the paper showing through. So I'm going to see if I can use some water just to bring some transparency back into this. And that's really cool. So I'm gonna leave that there. It looks like a cloud coming through. Sometimes it's nice to just let things happen. And so I like this. I'm going to do a little more of that. See if I can. It's pushing the paint to the edges, which will make this look a little bit more contrasted, which I like. Um, I think I just want this to be a little more loose. Then if I come back in with some really light opaque color, it just adds another layer of depth to what you're doing. Just kind of. You can always pull some of it back off too. I like this right now. I'm actually a little bit afraid to keep doing stuff 
to this because this I kind of want to I want to leave it so that it's giving me inspiration in the future so if I want to make a painting maybe that's got birds in a nest or something in it I've got this and I haven't covered it all up with other stuff that might not give me threads for future work so I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this as it is it doesn't need to be a finished thing it doesn't need to have a bird on it just because there's birds on the other page so I hope this gives you some ideas for what you can do in your sketchbook and how you can use this to feed the rest of your art practice.